and I would like to welcome the management of Hevels India on the call and thank them for giving us this opportunity. From the management, we have Mr. Anil Rai Gupta, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Rajesh Kumar uh, Gupta, Director of Finance and Group CFO, and Mr. Rajiv Goel, Executive Director and other members of the Hevels team. Sir, I would request you to give us some opening remarks and then we'll open the floor for a question and answer session. Over to you. Yeah, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the earnings conference call for the quarter ended June 2020. Hope you would have reviewed the results by now. We gradually and cautiously resumed activities in the first week of May and we gained momentum in June. Currently, all our factories are operating at full capacity, adhering strictly to hygiene norms. COVID-19 significantly impacted the performance during the quarter. However, we have seen decent recovery across categories post 15th of May. Consumer portfolio within all segments recovered earlier and better than the industrial portfolio. The recovery could be attributed to robust supply chain, disruption in unorganized sector, market share gain, and a spirited working from the local team. COVID-led disruptions continue to affect the demand market owing to local shutdowns and containment norms. However, there is a positive sentiment amongst the entire organization, and we will continue to build on the momentum gained during the last two months. External environment remains uncertain, and we remain alert and agile to the ground developments. We wish and hope that pandemic intensity slows down and normalcy is restored at the earliest. Thank you. We may now proceed for Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one at this time. Reminded to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. The first question is from the line of Arnab Mitra from Credit Suisse. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, my first question was that uh, your B2B and B2C businesses seem to have done more or less similar in the quarter. I'm talking of ECD versus, let's say, cables and wires and uh, switch gears. Uh, so, so did, are you seeing similar uh, recovery trends in the month of June, July also in those uh, B2B versus B2C businesses? And if you could throw, throw some light on the recovery on the B2B side. Well, actually, in all our segments, we have a component of consumer sales or uh, residential sales and professional sales or industrial sales. So these switch care, we have almost 70% coming from... Um, uh, uh, consumer or residential sales, whereas the rest is coming from industrial sales. Similarly, we have in cables and wires also, we have 50% sales come, which come from domestic wires as compared to industrial. So overall, if we divide uh, the overall company's numbers, which we have always maintained, it's around 70% from the consumer side. There we have seen better traction and better recovery than on the industrial, professional, and the government uh, purchase. So there is a differentiation between the uh, consumer sentiment and the uh, industrial sales. Uh, but it is improving in the month of June. It was improved over the month of May. So hopefully that should also come back soon in the, in the coming times. Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, and my second and last question is that uh, do you attribute some part of the June 4% growth to uh, restocking either directly in your dealers or in the end retailer segment or some sort of a pent-up demand, and therefore, would you anticipate that this could actually slip a little bit from these levels as you go ahead? So I would not say that uh, it is uh, uh, completely stocking. In fact, I would argue that uh, the 
stock levels in the trade are lower as compared to the pre-COVID levels uh, because most of the um, trade network has also focused on collection as well as maintaining a healthy working capital. But there was a mix of many things. Pent up demand could be one of the factors. Could also be uh, uh, the fact that the supply chain for unorganized sector was disrupted during this time. Could also mean market share gains because of our better entrenchment of distribution channel in the tier two, tier three towns and the rural areas. So the combination of factors. So hopefully going forward, we should uh, continue to maintain these market share gains or even try to improve that in the coming times. Um, okay, thanks, thanks. That's it from my side. All the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitin Arora from Access Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, just uh, two questions from my side. Uh, we saw the cash flow is negative uh, from the operations uh, this time. Uh, which we are seeing is largely uh, coming from the creditor uh, decline, uh, not much uh, movement seen on the receivables and inventory. If you can throw some light on that, uh, that's my first question. Uh, second is, uh, though till FI16, uh, we used to see, you know, Havels generally used to give, I'm, I'm talking about the listed entity Havels, used to give the first default guarantee to avail the facilities in terms of financing. Then in FI17, you started discounting receivables on a non-recourse basis. But now we are seeing, just to show your receivables on a better side, it's the promoter entity, QRG Investment now, which is somewhat where the promoter owns 11% stake in Hevels, is now somewhat uh, giving the, uh, the, the bank guarantee. Uh, why not a listed Havels? Why it is going to a promoter entity and giving uh, banking facility the guarantee here? It has more to do with optically your receivables should look good. Uh, if you can throw some light on that second question as well. Thank you. Okay. On the uh, on the first the first question was related uh, to. So on the cash flow, uh, we are saying the credit the cash flow right now. Yeah. Okay. On the cash flow. Uh, we have seen uh, uh, no movement on the receivable side. Uh, there is a reduction in the inventory by almost about 350 crores, uh, which also could, uh, you know, uh, get built over a period of time uh, because, you know, uh, the factories took some time to catch up with the demand situation. But I think there's a significant reduction in the trade tables. Uh, as a company, we took a, a conscious decision in the end of March uh, related to the uh, uh, payments related to the vendors, the dealers, uh, credit notes, the employee payments, as well as uh, the statutory payments. So it was part of our uh, strategy as well as, uh, uh, you know, let's say our decision to pay all the vendors in time. So we took that decision and today all the vendors have been paid in time as well as there are no overdues. So that has significantly reduced our trade tables from 1,400 crores to 700 crores which will get re rebuilt, uh, you know, once the production levels come to a um, uh, certain level. And um, uh, so I think the production levels are increasing and that will increase the trade tables as well. So going forward, you will see that the uh, this negative cash flows will again uh, get adjusted. Uh, Rajiv, would you like to take up the second uh, call? So on the second question, uh, you see regarding the promoter uh, entity, you see this is the arrangement which the banks have done with them. Havels India is not engaged in the same. And uh, around a couple of years back, I think uh, banks have uh, looked at uh, who can uh, sort of uh, support on the on the receivable side. So I think this is the arrangement which the banks and uh, and uh, and the QRG uh, group uh, Havels is not engaged into the same. So, but it's a promoter entity and QRG investment doesn't have any revenue. So, if bank is discounting the receivables of your uh, distributor or a dealer, the recourse guarantee is given by Havels. Is that the right way to look at it? QRG is not discounting any receivable, uh, first of all. And uh, second is the QRG, uh, that's the comfort with banks at the end of QRG. It's the machine, the, you see which Havels is doing any collection on the record or any relationship on this account between QRG and Havels. Okay. All right. Thank you. 
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amnish Agarwal from Prabhudas Liladhar. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir, my question is regarding the recovery. If you look at your sales, particularly both on the consumer side as well as Lloyd's, June has been 4% and 8% on the positive side. So how confident are we of sustaining this number and improving that in future? That is my question number one. And my question number two is that if you look at Lloyd's, where, where uh, the sales growth has been lagging the industry growth, so how are we uh, currently placed in Lloyd's and what are your plans going forward? Thank you. Thank you. I cannot say that with confidence that we can sustain this growth. Uh, in the future, actually, at least the next two or three months, we'll have to play as it as things come. We are, you know, we've shown in the last couple of months that we are very agile. Our factory production and supply chain systems are very strong. Uh, and we have gained market share. But it all depends upon how the market pans out in the next two or three months, how the situation in various markets regarding the uh, containment zones or the lockdowns continue to remain. So it's difficult to say at this stage whether we can maintain this growth level. What we can do, what we can say with confidence is that the company has worked hard in the last two or three months, as well as the investments which we've made over the last few years, paid off, uh, you know, after the lockdown opened. And hopefully this should continue to pay off and help us gain market share in all the product segments that we are in. So uh, that is something which I can say from our side. Okay. Uh, and so my second question was on Lloyd's. Yeah, on the Lloyd side, I think, uh, you know, things have turned around since the factory uh, started production. So our dependence on the imports, which was there last year, um, has, uh, has gone away completely. So we started this production since January this year. Lloyd has actually grown faster in the market. So what your reflection of, you know, growing slower in the market could be of the previous time when when we were dependent on imports and, you know, they were increasing custom duties, in, increasing uh, dollar um, uh, rupee comparison. But since the starting of this calendar year, things are much more positive on the Lloyd side as well. So our growth uh, has been better than the market. Yeah, sir, if I can squeeze one more. In terms of our overall portfolio, how much is our dependence on the uh, import of finished products from, say, China or any other country? Well, uh, uh, as we have always maintained that, you know, our company is more and more dependent uh, on production in India. We are a making, truly a making India company. We've done an enterprise risk management uh, analysis and um, if everything stops from China today, uh, the risk to our sales could be in the next, uh, in this calendar year, 5% of our sales. But, uh, uh, but I think, you know, uh, our teams are working on alternate sourcing uh, and possibilities of that. But this is, this is a, a, you know, doomsday scenario if everything stops from China. So that is the risk to our sales. Okay. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pavan Vitlani from SBI Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, uh, two questions. Uh, first, on the Lloyd, uh, if you can highlight what are the uh, investments that one can look for the next one and two years, and the and, and also if you can outline new categories like refrigerators that we spoke about, what could be the investments on uh, front? Uh, so that's my first question. Uh, the second question is uh, related to the EU uh, on, on the media. Uh, are you seeing any still changes in the way you Sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Vitlani. Your voice, uh, the audio is breaking from your line, sir. Request you to repeat your question. Uh, sure. Uh, uh, am I clear now? Yes, sir. Uh, thanks. Uh, so the first question is uh, for on uh, Lloyd's. Uh, could you highlight the investments uh, expected over the next uh, one to two years, and especially in categories like refrigerators that we have spoken about in the past? Uh, the second question is, uh, does the structural changes in the underlying business uh, post the COVID? So in a recent media interview, you spoke about online, offline, omni-channel. 
so if, uh, something on that will be used. Yeah, these are my questions. So uh, on Lloyd Investment, as you asked, you are aware we have uh, completed the investment uh, in the air conditioning the manufacturing. I think the, uh, this is something which can evolve over a period of time. Now, there could be a substantive opportunity both domestically and export also. Uh, but I think this is something we will continue to monitor. As far as the other product categories are concerned, we are not setting up the whole manufacturing there, but we are only working on a the ODM basis where there will be exclusive tools designed in-house and uh, manufactured by the by the third parties. So there we do not expect any significant capex, maybe up to 40 to 60 crore on the, on the lawyer side. However, I must, uh, I must caution here that uh, as the things improve, uh, there could be certain opportunities we may evaluate. Uh, but as and again, uh, it is formed up. I think it will be shared with the, uh, with the company on the stock changes. On the second one, uh, Anil, would you like to pick up the structural changes? Your structural changes? So basically, there is, uh, you know, we realized at the start of the uh, uh, time of the COVID that there will be changes in consumer behavior. So we have uh, we looked at our online strategy. As you know, the company has had a quite 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 a good balance between our offline and online strategy, and uh, nothing at the cost of the offline channel. Have we looked at uh, expanding the online channel in the past? So our continue our continuance in the uh, marketplaces like Amazon's and Flipkart's and the others will continue to grow. In fact, it will grow faster in the coming times because of our. Uh, let's say the new focus, as I said, of the consumer behavior changes. What we also realized is that while the consumer is coming more and more online, they still want uh, a more localized, uh, um, you know, fulfillment of their needs and services. And uh, so this was a, a unique model that we started as a O2O model, or the online to offline, wherein the, our existing channel, which is the physical channel, the retail network, uh, gets onto our e-store. And they start offering uh, the same products from their local stores uh, to the consumers uh, once the consumer comes on our e-store and places the orders. So uh, already we've onboarded many of our dealers who have started putting the SKUs available with them. And uh, so the, uh, and we will be propagating our e-store along with other marketplaces also going forward in the coming times. But this will be a sort of a digital model where physical deliveries, physical services will be catered to by the local uh, uh, store, uh, but the uh, the uh, order placement, payment, everything will happen online. Oh, thank you so much for taking my questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Venugopal Gare from Bernstein. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity. Uh, you know, I just wanted to check, uh, we have raised quite a bit of debt. Uh, I think 1800 crore of uh, credit line and we have, uh, we are still net cash to the extent of about 1800 crore. So I just wanted to check, why are we incrementally raising another 500 crores, you know, through the commercial paper? I don't know whether that's been approved or not. Because that's, you know, what is the fear uh, because of which is raising so much liquidity? Because ultimately you bear the cost of whatever you're raising, right? So, even if I look at your capex or your uh, negative operating cash, which you said will become positive, you don't really need this kind of a money. So what is that is a driver for this? Is it more for the risk that you see going forward or is it some opportunity that you're seeing in the market for which you're building these cash reserves? So, uh, Venu, uh, you know, we started when the pandemic uh, started. You are aware that we have not been taking loans. You can, you are aware of the past history also. We have been net cash positive and not taking loans in the balance sheet. But you see, when the pandemic uh, hit the, the country, everybody was scared as to what is going to happen. Maybe today in the hindsight, one could argue that uh, you should not have raised loans. But you see, everybody was looking to sort of shore up the, uh, sort of the capital at that time. Only we have not raised Capital, we said that taking some amount of debt will always be uh, sort of prudence. So I think it's coming purely from prudence. As far as the additional uh, raise is concerned, uh, it is largely to replace uh, the source. So usually we have taken some loans which were very expensive at that time, and we believe now we have an opportunity to raise at a lower cost. So that's why the CP is being taken. It's a very short term, which is up till the March 2021, which we believe and we hope fervently. And I think the uncertainty in the market uh, should subside, and I think there should be better clarity on the, what things are headed. So I think this is a abundant caution which we are taking, but we are not further expanding 
uh, at that level. This is better will remain the same. Only thing, the CT will substitute the short term role whichever we are carrying uh, in the in the in the balance sheet. And as situation improves, maybe in a quarter or two, I think uh, eventually the loans uh, have to have to go down. But this is something out of prudence. We believe uh, we should continue at least in March to do to zero to one. Sure. You know, one small question I think has been asked even earlier. Uh, in all your segments at this juncture, given that you have seen recovery of, of uh, the lows of uh, April, uh, based on your discussions with the dealers, retailers, and eventually who they sold the product to, where do you think uh, there is more chance of sustainability of uh, demand? Uh, I'm, I'm assuming your ECD portion probably would still be you know, uh, more sustainable than your switch gear table, or am I wrong at looking at these businesses that way? I think uh, in general, uh, in general, the consumer portfolio, uh, you are right, is holding well. And when we say consumer, you are aware uh, in our contract, even switch gear could be consumer because it goes to smaller smaller towns and smaller houses as well. We are not a, we are not something in large real estate uh, kind of a supplier uh, to the DLF or, or, or these kind of people. So, which means it just shows the uh, wherever our products are well distributed and it goes to the sort of smaller towns or the consumers or small contractors. There we have seen a traction, and this is what is reflecting in the numbers as well. Clearly, the slowdown is more uh, pronounced on the on the on the industrial side, whether it's industrial, whether it's power cable or it's professional lighting. On the consumer side, largely uh, it has been holding well. Yes, within that. ECD would be slightly better, but as of now, all categories, uh, what we classify as consumer, not strictly by maybe you are perceiving them, uh, have, have shown good traction uh, during the last two months. And we believe this could continue. Uh, I think we, I must bring that this time also that there is a consolidation which is happening in the industry in terms of move from unorganized to organized, which is a company which is more stable in terms of sort of supply chain. And I think this is where our own factories definitely deliver a uh, great help to us. Uh, which is a company which is more responsive to the dealers and things like that. So I think there's a lot at play at this time. And uh, uh, that's why we, we feel that if the situation on the ground remains fine because of this COVID, hopefully it should subside. Uh, I think we, we believe there are, there are good opportunities for having going forward. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Sure. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Akshay Bhor from Premji Invest. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, uh, am I audit? Yes, sir, you are. Yes. Uh, great, thanks. I have a couple of questions. First one is uh, on the cost side. We've seen a, a pretty impressive cost control, especially on the other expense side. Uh, are you looking at, uh, I mean, I can completely understand the current scenario doesn't warrant you to uh, spend as much either on advertising or some of the other overheads as well. Uh, but are you looking at some of the cost hits from a different lens and is there a possibility that uh, part of it could be sustainable? Any examples that you could share in terms of, uh, uh, you know, cost cuts that, that, that could sustain uh, for the next one or two years? And then second is uh, on the employee cost as well, uh, kind of surprising that sequentially as well there is some uh, decline. Um, again, uh, you know, is this, is this kind of level sustainable from here on? No, so um, obviously this quarter is a very different quarter and, uh, you know, we have looked at uh, from many lenses, not just one or two new lenses, but many new lenses we've put on and just look at each and every cost structure. And I think, uh, you know, what we, what we realize is there are certain good costs, bad costs, which have, you know, develop over a longer period of time in, an, in a new organization. So uh, really this quarter is not comparable in other costs uh, uh, per se because, there could have been, you know, somehow, uh, somewhat, uh, some rental waivers from some of the landlords, warehouse rental waivers, uh, definitely reduction in, uh, uh, you know, expenses in warehouses and some factories, uh, electricity expenses. So those are the kind of expenses definitely will come back once the production levels and uh, all those things are, are coming back. But uh, there would be newer ways of working as well. So that would definitely look at, so even for, for example, let's say marketing communications, there would be a need to relook at the uh, the way the consumption of media will happen in the future. So there will have to be a need to relook at that. The, kind, the kind of physical spaces uh, we will need for offices. Are they uh, Is there hello? 
the kind of physical spaces would need for offices so we you know just to give you an example there are uh, reductions in rents going forward as well for uh, existing offices or even reduction of some space because of the new ways of working for people uh, could you know travel expenses for example so some of it will definitely come back once markets open up but some of the travel uh, you know to small towns and all that could partly be replaced by um, uh, uh, you know uh, e visits and uh, e meetings also so there will be certain costs uh, uh, which will not come back and certain costs will come back so but uh, uh, the second question about the employee cost as you know the fourth quarter uh by the fourth quarter we have done some sort of uh, cost rationalization in our employee cost the first quarter is a is a bit of an aberration because uh, there was some voluntarily uh, voluntary uh, you know surrender of earned leaves by the employees uh, so that's not really a like to like comparison but going forward if we compare it to last year there will be uh, uh, improvement in uh, you know uh, productivity of uh, the employee cost Understood. Oh, that's that's very helpful. Uh, just on the online, uh, uh, you know, uh, channel side, uh, what kind of contribution comes from there, and what kind of traction you've seen uh, over the last two months? Uh, more importantly, what are your thoughts generally on the online uh, space, and how do you want to kind of nurture that, uh, uh, nurture that channel over a period of time? Well, uh, last month we saw a, a doubling of the sales in the online channel because, but you know, still. represented only about 3% of our uh, sales it's still a small number i think uh, you know i just mentioned in my early part of the uh, conversation as well that we definitely look at online as a uh, you know a changing consumer here and this will continue to grow in the coming time so we we definitely feel that we should be looking at similar market shares that what we have in our offline channel to uh, go forward and have it in each and every product category in the online channel as well so that's something which will be a focus uh, maybe a renewed focus uh, post covid as well so that will that will that definitely company is doing this as a new behavior great thanks thank you the next question is from the line of sonali salgaonkar from jeffries please go ahead So thank you for the opportunity. So my first question is regarding the demand trends right now. Uh, could you please highlight what kind of demand trends uh, we are witnessing right now, both in terms of primary and secondary sales, or the inventory, channel inventory, especially in the summer products? And are we seeing any down trending uh, in any of the categories? so the demand trends are there which is which are shown in the numbers so it's difficult to say that uh, you know we can predict the demand trends going forward but uh, whatever is reflecting in the numbers that's the reality of the demand numbers i don't think that the primary sales are more than the secondary sales in fact whatever has happened the secondary sales have actually been better than even the primary sales because the dealers have reduced their inventory levels uh, to be more disciplined than the financial aspects so there is uh i would say post covid uh the number of days inventory in the system probably has come down maybe even you know in the month of june not april and may but in the month of june and going forward in july the number of receivable days for our channel also might have reduced uh, uh, as compared to pre covid times so there is a better discipline financial discipline and hence uh, i would say that the uh, secondary demand is a, is a bit better than even the primary demand understand so and uh, should we uh, by when should we expect you know our creditor days to normalize uh, considering that this quarter was an aberration i think very soon because all the factories are operating at a full capacity so uh, when they operate at full capacity the purchases from the vendors will also be at uh, full capacity hopefully if this trend continues within the next uh, few months this should come back to normalized levels understand uh, so my second question is regarding uh, you know the rural versus urban split approximately what percentage of our sales and distribution reach is emanating from rural india well as you know we started our rural uh, activity just about um, uh, a couple of years back uh, and when we say rural means extremely small towns so it's not really villages villages 
are extremely small towns, population below 50,000. And uh, so those are, uh, that started, um, you know, it's uh, early days to say, but, uh, you know, uh, right now it's only about one and a half, two percent of our turnover. But in the month of June, uh, it doubled uh, as compared to pre-COVID times. So again, there, there could be a pent of demand as well. And we have to see going forward. But there is a renewed focus for uh, the company on uh, rural side as well. So we will be putting in more investment in expanding in rural. Understand. You, you specifically asked about the question about down trading. I don't see that uh, happening in a big way. I mean, um, you know, this is what our belief is always that in electrical products, uh, the consumers don't want to really downtrend, downtrade uh, because you know ultimately most many of the product categories are safety related as well. So um, I, I we don't see much of a downtrade happening. Sign in appliances. Appliances too. We don't see any down trading happening. In fact, I would argue that uh, because there are more people who are spending time at home more than before, uh, so in fact they are uptrending their, uh, up, they would be uptrading their uh, purchases and plans. Understand. So, and my last question. Also, you mentioned that you have gained market share in certain segments. So, which could these segments be? And uh, lastly, uh, when are we planning to launch the new variants? Uh, or a product categories in Lloyd's. That's it from my side. So we, uh, we've seen market share gains in many product categories, most of the product categories, I would say, because the fact is, as uh, Mr. Raji Gohl also mentioned, uh, that we've seen uh, you know, disruption in supplies of unorganized sector. And uh, so I believe that whether it is uh, switch care, residential switch care, or domestic wires, or uh, consumer uh, appliances, or even consumer lighting, we've seen market share gains uh, in every product category. And um, yeah, so sorry, what was your next question? Uh, so a launch in Lloyd's. So, yeah, new categories in Lloyd's. So we have already launched our refrigerators, and this will continue to be launched in various models uh, till till Diwali. So so basically, it's uh, uh, we are now. Uh, a full uh, portfolio company, including LED panels, washing machines, and refrigerators. Sure. Thank you. So that's it from my side. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the question queue. The next question is from the line of Atul Tiwari from City Group. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thanks a lot. Sir, just two questions. Uh, should, uh, can you hear yes. me? Yes, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. So, sir, uh, for the previous quarters, uh, you have uh, reclassified the segmental results. Yes, unallocable costs have been now allocated. So, could you, sh you know, throw some light on what are the changes there and why earlier it was not being done and on what basis has been done now. Uh, so obviously it does not impact your overall profitability, but it does you know, impact your uh, segmental margin. Uh, so some bit of color on that. That is my first one. And my second one uh, is on this uh, uh, first loss uh, guarantee being given by the promoter company. How much is the amount of receivable outstanding today covered under uh, this uh, uh, and does it cover all of your dealers or only some uh, of your dealers? So, Atul, on the, on the first one, uh, you see, the, starting this year, uh, you see, we have reviewed the entire uh, uh, segment. And if you will also observe, there is some other segment which we have created because we realize there are a lot of products uh, which do not strictly comply with the definition of a particular segment, which was also hindering a very deeper down uh, sort of allocation of expenses, which in fact has been one of the uh, sort of requirements of a lot of investors like you as well, that otherwise you see it doesn't become too much comparable. Um, so I think this entire uh, sort of review, view of uh, that we need to take out certain uh, products which are not, as I said, strictly compliant uh, with the requirements of a particular segment. And then once we do that, it was easy for us to go sort of deeper and uh, almost allocate, I think I said, one and a half percent. I think I said all the costs now have been allocated uh, to the uh, to the respective segment. So this is I would term more of a reclassification. There is there is nothing else which has been done in this. 
Okay, and sir, on the second one, uh, how much would you think we need to? Yes, we need to we need to we will review this and and get back. But there is no specific uh, data and all which has been uh, covered in this. How much exactly outstanding? I think this is something uh, we will get back to you after we will get back counts. Okay, thank. You. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Venkatesh Balasubramaniam from Tokyo Marine Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, just a query on the internet channel. Uh, correct me if I am wrong, but uh, the company doesn't sell anything directly on the internet channel. It is your dealers and retailers who are doing the sales. Correct? You mean the online uh, e-store of Havels? Uh, the uh, online. Uh, I'm basically talk, talking about something like Amazon or Flipkart. No, we sell directly to Amazon and Flipkart also. But if you do sell directly on Amazon and Flipkart, isn't that in a way competition to your existing dealers? I mean, but your dealers are okay with that? No, but we have 10,000 dealers and 150,000 retailers. So each dealer is a competitor to the other dealer as well. So uh, another channel which comes so tomorrow, you know, Reliance Digital is also selling our products. Chroma is selling our products. A dealer is selling our products. B dealer is also selling our products. So Amazon can also sell the products. So I think your question is relating to whether there is any price, predatory pricing by the online channel or not. And in our case, that is not the case and because we have uh, created a price discipline amongst all the channels. So we want to have an only presence, but not because not by one channel killing the other. Okay. So on that related note, when you when Havels as a company is directly selling on the internet on the online channel, uh, it doesn't have to share the dealer margins with anyone. So do you at least reduce prices by that amount or typically your sale on the online channels will yield you higher margins than that what you sell through the dealers? So let me just clarify, uh, Anil, can I just do? Uh, on the Amazon Flipkart, these are bought by the uh, distributors, uh, you see, who are dedicated, like this could be Cloudtail, for instance, in a case of Amazon for that matter. So if your question is, are we the primary dealer on the site of uh, Amazon Flipkart? No. Uh, so let's say Cloudtel, you must be aware of Cloudtel, I'm sure. Yes. Yes. So Cloudtel buys from us and then they do it uh, on the Amazon. But we are representing on Amazon through Cloudtel or anybody. There are other uh, specific distributors which also sell on the, uh, on the Amazon. Uh, so in that sense, it is not. And as far as the costs are concerned, we their costs related to the online also. More importantly for us, there is no price differentiation whether Cloudtail buys us from anybody else. As far as the consumer price is concerned, the price is uh, consistent between the offline dealer and online dealer. Whether we save an online dealer or not, I don't want to get into that. More importantly, our pricing to both of them is the same. There is no difference. They are just like any other dealer for us. Okay. Just on, a, on the same thing, why do you need a Cloudtail to sell on Amazon and Flipkart? Why wouldn't you sell it directly? See, because we do not have that uh, infrastructure, that's why Anil mentioned O2O. So what we are trying to promote is the O2O. Ultimately, we want to leverage the strength of our offline dealers on the online. So O2O model is that if, if somebody comes and buy on my website, then the execution will be done by the offline dealer, whether it is in Trivindram or, or Chennai or let's say Chandigarh. So this is ultimately what we were heading to. But as long as the customer is coming on Amazon and Flipkart, they're just like any other channel. So there, we do, because Cloudtail is interested in buying and they do more predictability. We cannot serve so many individual customers. That's not how we are structured. The only way we can service so many retail investors is through our O2O model, which we are now uh, executing. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Archal Lohade from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my first question was, if I read the um, uh, info update, uh, we have said that June has been about 104% of last year June. Um, just wanted to clarify, are you talking about the entire company or only the B2C part here? No, the entire company. Entire company. The B2C is, uh, is around 112% uh, in June. Understood, understood. And uh, second question I had was uh, with respect to uh, uh, if you could provide any color in terms of how the uh, different geographies are doing in terms of recovery or the impact. 
uh, and uh, also uh, in the same context uh, um, the contribution from the metro or top 10 cities uh, how that is uh, behaved no so the contribution from metro cities has come down in may and june and you know again this is this is all related with the lockdowns and uh, you know how markets are opening up as i said some places two days a week markets are closed some days weekends are closed so everywhere uh, uh, things are different but definitely the uh, in the initial stages tier 2 tier 3 towns and rural areas have performed better than the larger towns right and in terms of the geography in terms of east west geographically it all depends upon where you know how uh, the intensity of pandemic is and uh, uh, again dependent on the lockdowns otherwise uh, there is no distinction between uh, demand pick up most of uh, i would say the west is uh, taking the most of the time because maharashtra is the last part of the west maharashtra pune uh, nagpur that area that is taking more time to develop otherwise uh, south and uh, east and uh, east may be in east also if you see uh, kolkata is slow as compared to the rest of the states again within north if you see delhi is slow as compared to the other parts of north So it all depends upon you know larger towns have uh, uh, seen uh, lesser pick up of sales. Got it. And just a clarification on the loans part. I see that we've uh, had a 358 crores of long term borrowing uh, in this quarter. Uh, uh, so what I understand is uh, you know in terms of the uh, trade tables, uh, you chose to pay early. um and the uh, commercial paper part but uh, if you could elaborate a little bit about rationale for the term loan so no, term loan was taken uh, acha at the time when the pandemic started so probably you wanted to log in the long term loan as well and i think we had the capex already which we have done and it is in the offering as well so it was just tying up the the finances as i said in the hindsight one could argue whether we need it for this time frame or not And the the larger part of the 500 odd is, is basically short term uh, end of the cycle, which which will be replaced uh, maybe by this uh, CP. Sorry, uh, thanks so much for answering the question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vinod Bansal from Franklin Templeton. Please go ahead. Hi sir, a couple of questions, and my apologies for repeating on those earlier ones. uh if you could comment on how the is there any data on this you know first 15 20 days of july are we still feeling the june recovery or there has been improvement situation in there in july well i would say july is reflecting some amount of increased lockdowns and uh, so the intensity has slowed down in the second half of july or maybe after the 10th of july So things are uh, not in the same intensity because many of the markets still are under lockdown. So it has to be seen. Uh, hopefully, those things will start improving soon. Right. Also, you know, you spoke about uh, primary and secondary more or less in being in line. Uh, do we have any data or our own checks which could indicate how is the final consumer sales, grocery sales in the month of June have been uh, with the recent entry sales? So we don't have any uh, tertiary sales data except in a couple of products like air conditioners and water purifiers. Air conditioners, uh, generally speaking, tertiary sales have to be better than the primary sales because uh, you know uh, at the end of June anyway dealers don't want to keep high levels of stocks in the exiting season. So the tertiaries are more um, uh, than the negative. But this is more of a you know we are regularly in touch with the channel. and uh, uh, the channel definitely indicates that uh, they are trying to keep their levels of working capital low in this kind of a time so not to be you know faced with any financial difficulties so i believe uh, uh, they first reduced their inventories and then only started picking up material right and also you know you, you mentioned that uh, as such they have reduced inventories on pre covid levels but you know if you look at from march uh, when we did not sell much in the month, month of march so the channel entry was quite low towards the end of march would you would you like to say that at least q1 q2 the inventory might have seen some upward correction some normalization and higher inventory in channel versus march uh, not necessarily versus june last year 
Right. So you have to see that like, the lockdown happened on the 22nd of March. The buildup of major inventory uh, happens in the end of March, which then affects the primary sales in the month of April. But my point of the fact that uh, the inventories are lower than the pre-COVID levels are uh, more reflecting on the Jan, Feb, early March kind of level. So if the inventory was X today, it might be X minus 10. Uh, because, because as I said, people wanted more discipline on the financial uh, working capital. March anyway is a surge which happens in the end of the month, which never happened anyway. But that gets that would have gotten uh, you know ironed out by at least uh, by the end of June. Right. So uh, yeah. So basically, the, the very low we saw in March in terms of channel inventory might have been corrected uh, by by June now. Also, uh, finally, so you spoke about uh, you know gaining market share from unorganized sector. Uh, I was just curious about a bit. You know, as as a fairly um, popular brand, uh, we call ourselves mass premium, but the price points are different from unorganized. You think people have shifted from the lower price unorganized to a little more premium brands, yours or other other players in the same category? Because I always thought there were very different price points, not just a question of a brand versus unbranded. Is there a real yeah, it's, coming from there? It's less of price and more of supply chain. As, as, as you might have seen, that uh, you know the the major uptick in demand happened in the tier two, tier three towns uh, because of supply chain presence there. The unorganized sector does better, and it's the general notion that because it's low price, priced as well. But um, uh, even in these areas, we've seen our brand uh, you know gain momentum. That gives us confidence that it has, uh, you know, it's a it's a reflection of a, a brand not being too price sensitive, and the supply chain of unorganized sector getting affected because you know many of the factories were closed and availability of uh, uh, labor, cash, so uh, that reflected in the uptick in demand in the tier two, tier three towns. That's useful. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to one per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the question queue. The next question is from the line of Pulkit Patni from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot for taking my question, sir. So you actually mentioned, uh, you know, to somebody else's question that rather than down trading, there is up trading, and that is something we are also seeing when we do our dealer checks. But the other thing that we are seeing is that there's a lot of hesitation of the dealers to actually place orders. You know, given the uncertainty, what we are hearing is that that dealers are literally placing you know, exact orders of what they expect they'll be able to sell. So uh, my question to you is, do you anticipate some change in the distribution or some sort of larger credit periods being given by you, I mean, and the entire industry to make sure that the sale momentum starts again? Or do you anticipate that this is just maybe a hiccup right now because of the uncertainty and things should get back to normalcy and no trade terms, etc., are likely to change over the medium term? I doubt the trade terms would change over a year of term. In fact, it's a better discipline. You know, if, if dealers are not stocking heavily, they are not paying uh, companies in a longer period of time, it's definitely a better discipline. And companies who have production facilities, better supply chain, availability, they will gain uh, from this. I hope this trend doesn't go back. So I hope the dealers maintain uh, prudent levels of inventory so they don't lose sales, but they don't also overstock. And they keep paying uh, in time. So with the credit terms, if anything should be improved over a period of time, hopefully, and uh, the inventory levels uh, should also be better. So uh, you know, again, this is this is probably expecting too much, but at least that's what we should hope for. Sure, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vishal Biraya from Aviva Insurance. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Two questions. So, on the uh, when we look at the uh, rural and semi-urban market, what is the difference when you compare to the urban market when it comes to the margins that you offer to the dealers or the working capital terms? 
No, we offer similar margins, same margins, uh, except the fact that there may be distribution charges which we have to bear in terms of very, uh, you know, uh, far off, far flung off areas. But otherwise, the pricing and all is common all across the country. Okay. And, and, uh, Mr. Vishal, uh, sorry to interrupt you. This is the operator. May we request that you return to the question queue for follow-up questions as there are participants waiting. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manisha Garwar from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Mr. Manisha Hello, Garwar, sir. Your line uh, my question was answered. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Srinidhi Kalkar from HSPC. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question. So, uh, so you commented that uh, generally organized chairs are doing better uh, in post-COVID world given supply chain disruption. So would you also say that in general larger and stronger brands are doing much better, particularly given channel is getting destocked and maybe dealers and distributors would like to stock products which are much more fast moving and having stronger brand and that is getting also reflected in a better performance by branded companies? Yes, I would agree with you. Okay. So, and so just w one more question, if I may. So there seems to be a good traction in the washing machine category. It's a very small category in overall Lloyd portfolio. Uh, are you also seeing a similar traction uh, for, uh, for you as well? Well, as you rightly said, it's a very small portfolio for us. So our uh, sales and traction are more dependent on our availability of various models. Thankfully, in the last one and a half years post the acquisition, We've invested heavily in our own. Otherwise, we were totally dependent on China and small manufacturers. Now it's our own product, own design. Uh, we don't manufacture ourselves, which is an ODM manufacturing, but now we have a complete lineup. So going forward, so we may not be in a position to, uh, you know, gain a whole lot of the uh, post-COVID uh, uh, increase uh, uptake in the washing machine. But definitely okay. we are now on the right track to make it a uh, reasonable product in this range of well. Okay. Very much. Thank you for answering your question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ayush Gandhi from CLSA. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, this is Chirag here from CLSA. Uh, I just, uh, just on a, at an industry level, can you just please comment on the business of Lloyd's? What do you think of uh, channel inventory right now? And when do you think we should have uh, inventory dep uh, depletion? Also, we had a major disruption in the TVs portfolio earlier, and now I know that this quarter is not a last big quarter for TVs, but how do you see the competitive intensity uh, looking ahead? And also on the lighting business, do we see uh, the competitive intensity reducing and margins improving over there going ahead? So uh, on your first point on the Lloyd uh, uh, part, in terms of uh, channel inventory for the competition, I, I can't say much, as I've already said that you know, in our product category, the channel is has destocked during these last two months. Also, because of the season going away. So, you know, the AC season, generally people don't want to keep high levels of inventory at the exit of the season. On the LED front, uh, because our market shares are very small in this uh, uh, field, we have decided that we will continue to be in this field, but also, you know, more as a product filler for the entire range of uh, uh, Lloyd. Uh, and so uh, hopefully we should be, uh, you know, uh, decently growing in this business, but also uh, make, uh, maintaining it, maintaining its profitability and not be worried about the vagaries of the competitive intensity in this area. So it's more of an internal strategy right now for us as compared to an external competitive strategy. And um, thirdly, um, uh, I, I agree with you on the LED part, uh, which is what we have highlighted earlier as well. But uh, what I'm trying to uh, see is whether the LED portfolio is not hurting the overall profitability of Lloyd's anymore. Not so anymore. LED, it is, LED, it will of, the LED will be more of, uh, you, have, you have known that we will we'll try to play it on the side. Uh, so that will not be the main frame sort of push from Lloyd. Our large focus will be AC, uh, washing machine, and, and refrigerators. Perfect. And just on the lighting margins? Mr. Gandhi, sorry to interrupt you. May we request that you return to the question queue for follow-up questions? Most certainly. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhumika Nair from IDFC. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, good evening, sir. Uh, so, just wanted to understand and delve a little bit de uh, deeper into this June growth of four percent. While you did mention that in maybe lighting would have done better than cables and switches, particularly because of the B two B weakness. Uh, if you can highlight what percentage of levels are, and you know what is the kind of trajectory in July. And a related question you mentioned was that you know we would have gained market share because of uh, you know lack of material availability from unorganized or some other players. Um, so are these recent market share gains that we are seeing are they sticky in nature or you know as their supply chain kind of normalizes and their material availability to the market kind of normalizes, uh, will this revert back to our normalized market share and they would come back into the system or do you think that you know these are more stickier market uh, share gains? So if you could throw some light on the uh, quality of the growth and in terms of this market share aspect. So, Bhumika, uh, you see, we have given June, which are the facts we have shared with you. We believe, as I said, it could be a larger shift from unorganized to organized. And uh, then it depends upon within organized who has gained. I think it's too early to comment who has gained what. But we believe, look, there has been a moderation in the demand. So one can, can't deny that. I think there has been growth for the organized because the unorganized supply chain is fairly disruptive. However, we've seen the large events which happened, whether it was Demon or, or GST and now this. Normally, you see, the, there is a gain uh, for the organized sector. So I think that's something, frankly, we can comment as of now. As you said, uh, we need to see how things play out in the next few quarters. As far as July is concerned, again, I think it's too early to comment on how things are happening. I think uh, Anil alluded earlier during this call that there are a lot of these regional shutdowns. You are fully aware, uh, you track the country every day basis, uh, that uh, the disruptions are, disruptions are still there. So I think... Frankly, this is something we need to watch out as we as we go. Or we can say, I think we are very well organized in terms of agility, in terms of robustness, in terms of the enthusiasm in our team, both at central and the local level. So whenever there is opportunity, I think we are we are fairly agile to capture that. I think that's something, frankly, one can say at this point of time. The external environment continues to be fairly hazy and uncertain. Great, sir. Thank you very much. I wish you all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Naval Sate from MK Global. Please go ahead. Thank you for the option. Sir, uh, one question on Lloyd. Uh, as you have stated, that there was a uh, sir, uh, this is the operator. Sorry to interrupt you. Please use the handset mode. Now it is better? Yes, sir. Thank yeah. you. Okay. So my question is on, on Lloyd. Uh, as you have stated that there was a market share gain, uh, can you elaborate a bit anything region specific because last year if you look at there was a market share loss in West India specifically because of some uh, distribution disruption what you had seen but uh, now uh, market share gain anything to reflect on region uh, specific uh, you know something on that part? I think no. uh, I don't think specifically we have talked about the, the market share gains for Lloyd which is the organized sector as group. Definitely, our growth is, is superior than than last uh, the last year, and we believe our our uh, factory inauguration, the fact that so many dealers visited, there is a general sort of uh, uh, you see affinity uh, for loyal in the market. That's what we perceive. I don't think we can really cut it uh, across what geography and all, but in general, I think we are fairly enthused by the response loyal has got in the last two months and continues to uh, do even during the month. So we hope this will continue uh, to sustain. Okay, and is it fair to assume that your inventories would be largely similar or lower than last year? Is it fair to assume in Lloyd? It will be slightly lower, but you have to appreciate that April, which was the biggest month for the AC industry, I think we lost that. So I think the moderation, frankly, you will see over the over the next over the next few quarters because now they also shift from CBU uh, to the to the own factory. So I think this will get. I think you have to wait for the end of the year to to see that uh, sort of uh, variation. Oh, thank you and all the rest. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question.